Assalamu alaikum. Hope you're all doing well. Inshallah, today we are going to take a dive into Surah Al Layl. So grab a beverage, a pen and paper, inshallah, if you want to take notes, and let's jump right into it. This is a beautiful surah that allows us to reflect, inshallah, on what we are striving for and how we are living our life. It contains a contrast between two ways of life. So let's look at the first ayah. By the night when it covers. So we've talked about this in previous surahs that this wa uh, at the beginning is a form of swearing on something. So Allah is swearing by the night when it envelopes everything in darkness. He's swearing on this moment. And then there is a contrast in the next ayah that says, nahari إِذَا tajalla," And by the day when it shines or appears. So he has sworn now by two things. And there's a contrast between these two things, right? The night and the day. And we will see, subhanAllah, the theme of the surah, there is a contrast between two groups of people. So it's a really fitting choice of swearing to follow the theme of a contrast between two things. وَمَا خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى One more swear, and by the one who created male and female. The one who created male and female, of course we know, is Allah. So he's swearing by himself. And again, we have a contrast in this verse, male and female, right? So we see the surah starting off swearing on things that are contrasts, the night and the day, the male and the female. But what is he swearing about? He's swearing by these things about something, right? So now we get to the topic or the subject of the swear. So he's going to tell us something important, which is, Indeed, your efforts are diverse. Our efforts are all diverse, are very different, right? Some good efforts, some bad efforts, and even within the good efforts, there are diverse efforts. One person may give charity sincerely for Allah. Another person may be giving charity, but behind it is a different intention, whether it is for other people to see this, to see him giving charity and say that he is generous, or for other reasons to get favors or for other things. So even within the good, we might all be doing the same action, but there might be different intentions behind it for different people. So all our efforts are diverse. And now he tells us about two different distinct groups of people. As for the one who gives and fears Allah. This way of phrasing it, as for the one who, we know that there's going to be a comparison, right? So as for the one who, he's going to give us now an example of one person. And we know that later on, he will give us an example of another person because of the way this verse is phrased. As for the one who gives and has taqwa, has God consciousness. Give, a'ta is left general in this verse. So giving could be financial giving in terms of money and financial things, or it also could be giving in terms of obligations and actions and worship, like praying and fasting. You are giving to Allah doing those things. So the phrase giving is considered to be general. Since it doesn't identify a certain thing of giving, it's just a general phrasing of giving. What taqa and the one who has taqwa, who has God consciousness, fears Allah, is aware of Allah, is conscious of Allah, does things for Allah's sake, stays away from things for Allah's sake. Wasaddaqa bil husna and believes in al husna, the ultimate good. And the ultimate good is interpreted to mean the ultimate reward with Allah or the ultimate good meaning the ultimate belief, meaning the belief in Allah, la ilaha illallah, and everything that it entails. So if you believe la ilaha illallah, true belief, then it captures everything as well. The belief in the messengers, the belief in the books, the belief in uh, Jannah and Nar and everything that comes with it. And Saddaqa is not just believed, but someone who acts upon that belief. So it's a full belief with action as well. So what happens to this person who gives, has God consciousness, and believes in the ultimate good? We will ease him towards ease. Subhanallah. Allah's gift to this person is that he makes it easier for him to do good deeds. So he will ease him toward ease. 
it's a beautiful thing that Allah is not just saying that he's going to reward this person. No, he's also going to facilitate for this person to make it easier and easier for this person to do more and more and more good. So he'll make it easy for him. So this is the first group that is mentioned. This is the person who is successful. This is the example that is given to us in this surah. The person who is successful has what three characteristics that are mentioned in this surah. Someone who gives, and what we mean by giving is giving for Allah's sake. Someone who has God consciousness, so is aware of Allah and does things for Allah and stays away from things for Allah. And also believes in the ultimate good, the oneness of Allah and everything that it entails. So the person with these three characteristics, we understand this person is a successful person and Allah will ease for him the way of ease. There is a really interesting subtle difference in the phrasing of this verse and a verse that we have in Surah Al-A'la. In Surah Al-A'la verse number 8, we have a verse directed at the Prophet وسلم, and it says It's directed at the Prophet and we will ease you towards ease. But there is a very subtle difference in the wording. In the one that is aimed at the general person, there is a one extra letter, se. Sen yassiruhu lil yusra. But with the Prophet وسلم, we don't have that se. It's when we yassiruka lil yusra. What is this subtle difference? The subtle difference is that this se tells us, and then we will, and soon we will ease you toward ease. The Prophet وسلم, is not given this se, it's not soon, it's not and then, because the Prophet وسلم, is already at that level, is already fulfilling these characteristics. He already has that God consciousness, that giving for Allah's sake, that belief, the true belief in Allah and everything that, in, in, that it entails. He's already there, subhanAllah. So you see the phrasing is that Allah is already telling the Prophet ﷺ that we are easing for you the way of ease. We are making it easy for you. Whereas the rest of us, the general people, when it's phrased towards the general person, we have the phrasing, and then we will ease you towards ease. So fulfill these conditions first, because we're not necessarily there at that level. Fulfill these conditions. The person who works to fulfill these conditions, then Allah will make it easier and easier and easier for that person. So subhanAllah, it's such a subtle difference in phrasing just one letter tells us subhanallah the difference in where the prophet وسلم, was and where we are for us we're wavering turning left and right you know we're not perfect we make mistakes but there's still hope and allah knows that so the phrasing is different for us and it captures mercy from allah as well to tell us and then we will ease you towards ease so it's okay if you're not there yet but if you fulfill these conditions you will be there inshallah so we need to fulfill these conditions and Allah tells us that he guarantees us that he will make it easy for us. He will make the easy way easy and easier and easier. So inshallah, let's take this as encouragement. If you are finding it hard to pray, if you are finding it hard to fulfill your obligations, if you are finding it hard to refrain from doing certain things, take this as encouragement to keep trying inshallah and know that it will not always be this difficult. Know that Allah guarantees through your efforts that he will make it easier and easier and easier for you. So find comfort in that, find encouragement in that, find hope in that, inshallah. And know with full certainty that Allah soon will make it easier and easier and easier for you. Not just to do the things you are trying to do, but to do more and more and more, inshallah. And then we go to the other side. Now we have the contrast of another person. وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى but as for he who withholds and considers himself free of need. Bakhila. So he's greedy, hoarding wealth, miserly, keeping things to himself. Wastagna. Istagna is the feeling that you are not in need of anyone else, that you are self sufficient. You don't need anyone, including Allah. You don't need anything. This quality of greediness is being really focused on this dunya and investing in this dunya. Being so enveloped or invested in this life and not in the hereafter. And that makes one greedy and greedy and greedy, wanting more and more and more from this dunya for themselves. And that greediness 
when you hoard and hoard and hoard and hoard and save wealth for yourself, that can turn into a feeling of self-sufficiency. I have everything here, I'm wealthy, I have status, I have this and this and that, and you feel like you don't need anybody. You have a nice house, you have a nice car, you're living a life of luxury, and you keep hoarding and saving, and you want more and more and more, and you feel like you don't need anybody. It turns into an arrogance and a self-sufficient feeling that makes you feel like you don't need anybody, including Allah. So you get more distant and distant and distant from Allah and you forget to invest in the hereafter. These are qualities that Allah has given us in this surah of the type of person who becomes unsuccessful to Allah, right? They might think that they are successful in this world, but to Allah, this is unsuccessful. And the next verse continues, وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى And who denies the ultimate good. Before, we saw the person who صَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى Believes in the ultimate good. Now the contrast is this person كَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى Denies the ultimate good. So denies the true belief. So this person feels so self-sufficient in this dunya and is so focused on this dunya that just forgets the true belief and oneness of Allah and is not focused on Allah is so focused on gaining in this world that he denies the truth and faith and religion and the oneness of Allah and what are we told about this person? again we have the contrast we will ease him towards difficulty we will make the difficult path easy for him what is the difficult path? the path where there is so much difficulty which is the path of hellfire and all the evil deeds that come along with that that path that is a very difficult end to have allah will make that path easier and easier and easier for that person who keeps going down that path so allah's infliction on this person for denying the truth and and following these different characteristics and feeling themselves self-sufficient allah's infliction on this person is that he will make it easier and easier for them to land themselves in a difficult situation. Evil becomes easy for this person. May Allah protect us from being in this situation and not recognizing that this ease is taking us towards difficulty. Ya Rabb, make us aware and make us God conscious of what path we are on. So Allah gives us the two examples of people and it's a reminder to us to not get too distracted by the dunya because sometimes we might get too focused on the dunya and gaining in the dunya and we think that we are in a good situation so may Allah protect us from this ending so we saw now also that the unsuccessful group also has three qualities greed a feeling of being self-sufficient and denying the truth and what will his wealth avail him when he falls Taradda is to fall into a pit or a, a ditch. So what ditch is this person falling into? It's considered to be the ditches of evil deeds that are the grave and the hellfire. And at this point in time, this person's wealth that they have been saving and hoarding and being greedy about will not help them in any way when they are in this ditch. This type of person is working to get a high status in this dunya. But Allah lowers them and describes it as a ditch, that these people are lowered. And subhanAllah, those who lower themselves in this dunya and humble themselves in this dunya, Allah raises them and Allah elevates them. It's a complete opposite contrast. <inaudible> Indeed, upon us is guidance. A reminder to us that guidance comes from Allah. Don't become arrogant in your guidance. Even if you are guided and doing righteous deeds and learning and knowledgeable and so on, remind yourself that this guidance comes from Allah. Don't ever think that you are better than anybody else because you are righteous or doing certain good things. Don't look down on anybody. Allah reminds us the guidance comes from Him. And also remember that He has sent us so much guidance in terms of messengers and books in terms of signs all around us the creation all around us there's so much guidance and signs all around us that we can reflect on and so we don't have an excuse and in our control is the hereafter and the worldly life everything in this life and the next belongs to allah 
it's not just the hereafter that belongs to him. He reminds us also this dunya, everything that you have in this dunya, everything you are collecting in this dunya, everything you are striving for in this dunya, remember that it belongs to Allah. So I have warned you of a fire that is blazing. None will burn therein except the most wretched one. Who is the most wretched one? He explains to us. الذي كذب وتولى who had denied and turned away denied with your heart internally in denial and then تولى turned away with your actions you turned away with your actions وسيجنبها الأتقى but the righteous one will avoid it الأتقى is someone who has the most taqwa God consciousness and what are the characteristics of this person? الذي يؤتي ما له يتزكى who gives from his wealth to purify himself so this person spends his wealth in obedience to his lord to purify himself purely for the sake of Allah وما لأحد عنده من نعمة تجزى and not to return a favor to anyone so this person is not paying or giving someone because they feel that they need to return a favor. For example, someone gives you a gift and you feel like I need to get, give them a gift now. I have to do it. It's just an obligation. I owe them a favor or they invited me. I need to invite them. And not expecting anything back, not giving to someone because you want something then later in return. So it's purely for the sake of Allah. Not expecting something from a person or someone. Expecting just from Allah. Just seeking Allah's reward through this giving. <inaudible> but only seeking the countenance of his Lord, the Most High. So this person is only seeking reward from Allah. Is not seeking anything from that person. If that person, they do something for someone, they give something to someone and someone doesn't say thank you or doesn't do something for them they don't care about it because at the end of the day they have given purely for Allah's sake that's it they just want the reward from Allah look at the phrasing of this verse Rabbi al-A'la his Lord the Most High Allah tells us the Most High this person understands that he is not the Most High his wealth, status, etc. doesn't make him high. This person understands that Allah is the most high. And that is who this person is seeking reward from, from the one who is the most high. In contrast to the other person who thinks that they are high and self-sufficient and not in need of Allah, Allah reminds us here that he is the most high. Remember this, he is the most high. And he is going to be satisfied indeed surely this person will be pleased Wala is indeed so soon the people who have these attributes will be pleased because the reward with allah doesn't leave anyone disappointed the reward with allah will leave you satisfied in this dunya we chase things wanting more and more and more and to gain from this dunya because we are not satisfied with what we have and allah tells us that this person that is doing things purely for the sake of allah will be satisfied with what allah gives this person allah doesn't tell us what this person gets but he describes the feeling and the emotion that this person will have, this person will be satisfied. And what better satisfaction is there than the one that comes from Allah? May Allah make us of these people that are satisfied because there's no disappointment with Allah. There's complete satisfaction. In this dunya, we are never satisfied. It's always the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. We want this, we want that. And then when we get it, we want something else. And it's a whole cycle. We are never, we're not content in this dunya. There's no contentment in this dunya. But with Allah, there's contentment. When you seek Allah, there's contentment. And He will leave you satisfied. Ya Allah, make us of this group who are satisfied with their Lord, Ya Rab. That is the end of Surah Al-Layl. I hope, inshallah, that you found benefit. I hope it serves as a reminder to us by looking at the contrast of two groups of people to really reflect on ourselves and see where we can improve, inshallah, and where we can strive to do more for the sake of Allah so that we can be of the people that are satisfied at the end. Assalamu alaikum.